Hello and welcome to another segment with the Nairobi Hospital. Today we'll be talking about the pediatric allergy services that is being offered at the Nairobi Hospital. And taking us through that discussion is Dr. Evelyn Nganga, a pediatrician and also an allergy specialist. Karibu sana, Daktari. Thank you so much. So I would like you to take us through what is pediatric allergy service? Okay, so this is a service that is um, mainly focused on children, hence the pediatric. And it just covers a broad range of um, conditions that present themselves with an overreaction by the body's immune system, really. So things such as food that we would be ordinarily very tolerant to, manifesting as you know an, 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 what we call an allergy. So this is a service we're looking to provide. So for the patients who are suffering from the various categories of allergies, which we will delve into in a little later, um, trying to get them to have a better quality of life because allergies tend to be quite chronic and affect children's quality of life greatly. Yeah. So what are some of the different categories of allergies? Okay, so they vary and allergies actually affect quite a number of um, systems, like systems in the body. Mm -hmm. So ranging from skin, which tends to be the commonest, like the atopic dermatitis or what we also call eczema, it can affect the nose and eyes in conditions such as allergic conjunctivitis, allergic rhinitis. These are conditions whereby a patient is having, so for instance, for the rhinitis, dripping, dripping nose all the time, snorting, waking up with a, a bit of a postnasal, what we call a postnasal drip, so always clearing the throat. More often than not, it's associated with atopic conjunctivitis, so itchy eyes, watery eyes. And this could be seasonal, so with changes in weather, or it could be perennial, which means through all year round. Oh, do we have uh, different categories of uh, allergies? Yeah, we do. So maybe I can break it down in, in the way you've highlighted it. So for instance, skin, that would be the eczema. Respiratory, the respiratory system actually starts from the nose. So it starts from the nose all the way down to the lungs. So that would mean allergic rhinitis, um, asthma, that would fall under the respiratory system. Then if you're looking at the gastrointestinal system, these are patients now who have trouble with things that are taken in orally and enter the gut. Mm -hmm. So then that's where you position things like food allergies. So that's where that comes in. And then there's a different group completely, like the drug allergies. That's a completely different um, group of allergies. Mm -hmm and the commonest being penicillins that people are allergic to. And the good news is you can actually outgrow a penicillin allergy. So those are some of the things we'd like to, um, or, or past the myths that, you know, once allergic to penicillin, always allergic mm -hmm. to penicillin, not necessarily. There's also the bees or wasp stings that could lead to a very severe reaction. Yeah. So what are some of the outstanding uh, symptoms that come with these allergies, different types of allergies that you've mentioned. Okay. So one of the key things in identifying an allergy is actually itch. So itching. Mm -hmm. So itching of the skin, itching of the eyes, rubbing of the nose. Those are, that's a very key symptom when it comes to allergies. Mm -hmm. And that's usually as a result of a chemical in our bodies called histamine. So it just triggers you to itch and itch some more. Even when you're having a drug allergy, for instance, you'll erupt into a rash and it will be an itchy rash. Mm -hmm. If you're having a food allergy, as you said, eating meat for some patients, then you end up with what you call wheels or hives. They're very itchy. Then when it comes to, um, for instance, the respiratory system, so things like cough, um, runny nose, because as I said, it starts from the nose going all the way down. Mm -hmm. And this cough tends to be more at night what we call a nocturnal cough, especially in the asthmatics, because of changes in weather. And also, if you've been lying down in your bed, there's probably some house dust mites that can trigger you as well. Mm -hmm. So then you get this kind of cough. Mm -hmm. When it comes to things like um, food allergies, in addition to having wheels, then you can have children who are aversive to food, especially for the very young kids. Mm -hmm. So you find a child just does not want anything that has egg in it. They take the egg and they just want to vomit it or they just completely refuse to have it. Yes. Or they could even have abdominal pain or what we call colics where a child is just so uncomfortable and you're wondering, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm. 
you can have children who have chronic diarrhea, so their stools are just never settled, you know, or changes in stool color, blood and that kind of thing. So every system has different symptoms that manifest. And on top of that, having a family history of allergy shows that this is a patient who has that predisposition, what we call atopy. So that combined with the history that you get from the patient and you're able to make a diagnosis of allergy. Mm. Yeah. How many hospitals, both uh, public and uh, private in this country, are offering this type of service, the pediatric allergy service? Well, I'd say as of now, we are two pediatric allergologists in the country. Mm -hmm. So we've just started our service here, but there's also one other hospital that's able to offer that. Yeah. In terms of... Um, um, allergy service for adults. There's been a clinic that's been offering that and they also cover um, the pediatric age group. So for the longest time that's been happening. So now we're trying to more um, specialize into addressing children's needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for now we are actually just two centers offering okay. that. So when it comes to offering this service or making it available, uh, at least uh, let's say half of the counties that we have in the country, what are some of the challenges standing in between having these services being offered? So in that regard, we need to build capacity through more training of doctors, training of nurses as well. So not just in the private hospitals, but also in the public hospitals. Unfortunately, as it stands right now, this country is not able to offer pediatric allergy training. So you need to do it outside. So the gaps, include just the technological know-how and also the human capacity in terms of support from mm. nurses and other cadres actually including dietitians and the lung function technicians mm. and that kind of thing so what prompted nairobi hospital to open this service pediatric allergy services okay yes I've, I've been working for the nairobi hospital now for almost this is this should be my sixth year okay. And for the period of time I've been seeing patients in the pediatric outpatient clinics and even in the wards, there was a huge number of children who were presenting with allergies. At the time, the training we have in our um, master's program does not touch too much on allergies and does not delve too much into the details of management. Mm -hmm. So I thought, hey, there's, there's definitely a gap here. We have a huge cohort of patients who are not well addressed in terms of their management. Okay. This service is not available here, so I had to sort of try and scout around for that. And lucky for me, I got a position at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. And it's only after doing that training that now I brought it back to the Nairobi Hospital. And of course, with lots of support, we've been able to set it up and I'm looking forward to just seeing what it, it holds in terms of changing one life yes, at yes. a time. <laughs> what are some of the treatments available? We have home remedies and we also have medicinal treatments. Okay, so in terms of um, home remedies, more often than not, the first thing is to, as a mother or as, as a guardian of the child, is to identify the exact thing that you feel your child is allergic to. Mm -hmm. Once you identify what it is, and one of the commonest things or one of the best things you can do is avoidance. So that's easily done in the house. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, things like, for instance, activated charcoal, if you, if you suspect your child is either having, a, I don't know, has eaten something that you feel just didn't, did not go well, I think activated charcoal would be a nice place to start because it absorbs any um, poisons or anything that is... Uh, yeah, basically any poisons, and that would be a good place to start. Though I'm obviously not trained in, in, in that area, so I'm just speaking out of experience. Okay. Now, when it comes to the pharmacotherapy that we offer at the hospital, so I'll give an example of eczema. It's really a condition that is to do with dry skin. Mm -hmm. So your skin barrier is broken, and as a result, you have a lot of water loss from the skin. And in addition, you also have exposure of, the, of your immune system through the skin. So you have bacteria, microbes, pollutants, including diesel fuel and all that, mm -hmm. that can enter through your skin and then cause further irritation and worsening of symptoms. So the main aim of therapy is to reduce that itch and inflammation. And how to do that is to give a good moisturizer that helps to seal the skin off and to retain the moisture. Mm -hmm. And then of course you want to try and avoid any 
triggers, so things like um, harsh chemicals or harsh detergents mm. overheating the child. If it comes to eye allergies, then because the main thing that's released during an allergic reaction is histamine, we tend to use products that are antihistamines, so either antihistamine eye drops or an actual oral antihistamine that you can take. Mm. For drug allergies, of course, number one, identify and confirm that the allergy is present mm -hmm. to that particular drug. Address other drugs that are similar to the drug that the patient is allergic to, and then advise clearly on avoidance. Mm -hmm. And also have a, a medical art bracelet, something that is clear on the patient that I'm allergic to this and that. And that goes for food allergies as well. Mm -hmm. Once you identify the actual food, then the patient has to have a medical art bracelet that is clear. So whether they're going to school or they're at a party, in, in the event that they get exposed and they have a very severe reaction, mm -hmm. then the bracelet can be life-saving. Someone can know that this and that happened. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is EpiPens, which contain um, adrenaline. So adrenaline is life-saving. So for the ones who have the very severe allergic reactions, what we call anaphylaxis, mm -hmm. can use the EpiPen for that. And actually one of the themes of the World Allergy Week this coming June is anaphylaxis. Mm -hmm. So at some point we will be giving some public education on how to use EpiPens because it's, it's very, it's life-saving. Mm -hmm. Others can involve what we call immunotherapy which is basically trying to um, prime your immune system or teach your immune system to tolerate that thing that you're allergic to. Okay. So you can do it towards things like house dust mites. You can do it towards things like bee stings. Mm -hmm. That's quite advanced, mm -hmm. but it's also something that we can offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. What time, uh, when can somebody come to Nairobi Hospital? Which are the days that these services are being offered at the Nairobi Hospital? So as a start, we are doing it on Monday, so today actually, mm -hmm. and it starts from 8.30 to 3.30 um, on booking appointments only. Mm -hmm. So we have a number that probably we can share with the public okay. for, for them to know. Mm -hmm. um, and what you do is once you've booked, then you just come in and we see you at your appointed time, mm -hmm. do a thorough history, get to know what is a you know, suspected allergy, mm -hmm. and then do the appropriate tests as necessary. Mm -hmm. So different allergy conditions carry different uh, uh, hospital fees. Yes. Okay. And, and that would be in, with regards to what tests are required okay. and of course the treatment that's required. Mm -hmm. So that's really the variable. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the consultative um, fee, it's the same for all of them. Okay. In situations whereby you are met with an emergency or rather an acute allergic reaction, what should someone do? Okay, so number one is communicate what you're feeling immediately. Mm -hmm. And the thing with these kind of severe allergic reactions, they happen very fast. So you literally have minutes to get to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you've been able to communicate that, mm -hmm. then you rush to the nearest hospital. If in the, in the event that you have antihistamines on you, please take them immediately. Mm -hmm. In the event that you have an EpiPen, please use it immediately. Don't sort of try and figure out is this a very severe reaction, I'm only feeling an itch. Just you'd rather give the EpiPen and then sort it out later when you get to the hospital. Yeah, so for for me, I would say that the, the take home message is get to the nearest hospital and get help. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Harry. Allergies are the most chronic illnesses greatly affecting quality of life and a child's learning potential. For more information, visit the Pediatric Allergy Clinic at the Nairobi Hospital. I'm Mothani Waweru. See you next time.